we talked about the plane motion of rigid bodies. And in the, the plane motion of rigid bodies, what we're we talking about, we have some type of rigid body with different forces being applied to it. And we can write this as the same rigid body with a rotation characterized by I, the moment of inertia, times alpha, and the mass times the acceleration. So that's the plane motion of rigid bodies. We broke that down into three different subcategories, looking first at non-centroidal motion, non-centroidal rotation, second at energy and momentum methods, and finally using the principle of impulse and momentum. So let's look at each one. For non-centroidal rotation, we had a few equations to remember. First, that we could calculate the tangential and the normal components of the acceleration this way. So the tangential compart component of the acceleration we can write here as the R the center of mass, so the distance between the center of mass and the point we're talking about, um, times alpha, and then alpha is the angular acceleration, where the normal component we would write this way, it's that R center of mass times omega squared, where omega is the angular velocity, and in this case squared. And then we also had the parallel axis theorem, which told us that the moment of inertia for any point is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus m r squared, where that r is the distance between the center of mass and the point we're talking about. Now for the second subtopic, which is energy and momentum methods, we really just had to write down the, you know, consider that the kinetic energy plus the potential energy initially should be equal to the potential plus the kinetic energy at the final state. And the, the, the added complication when dealing with the plane motion of rigid bodies is that we wrote the kinetic energy here represented by T as one-half mv squared which you should all be familiar with where that's the velocity of the center of mass but we had this added term which had to do with the rotational energy so now we've got a half I which is the moment of inertia, I, times omega squared. And so we've got the, here the first part, the translational term, and then the second part, the rotational term. We could also write the power as m d theta dt. Where this m, let me uh, erase this, I'll make it into a capital M to make this clear. This m is not the mass, but it's the couple. So let me write this that's the magnitude of the couple. Um, and we could write that as m omega. Now the third topic, subtopic in the plane motion of rigid bodies, was using the principle of impulse and momentum. And, and again, the, the general idea is we have a two-dimensional rigid body, which we could write as, as in some initial state would have a 
um, linear momentum, which is the mass times the velocity, V1. It also has some angular momentum given by I omega. And then if that same rigid body has some impulse applied to it, which we'll write here is the integral of f dt, we can set that equal to some equivalent final state which has a linear momentum of the mass times the velocity, so here it's v2, that was v1, and it has some rotational angular momentum given by I omega 2. And this was omega 1. So there you go, that's the principle of impulse and momentum applied to the plane motion of a rigid body. So here's the plane motion of a rigid body. Um, it's got some rotational momentum, some linear momentum. You can add in an impulse, which is just the integral of a, of a force over a short time, and that'll equal the final linear momentum plus angular momentum. And here, once again, is the overall picture for the plane motion of rigid bodies. Um, we've got, we broke it down into three subtopics, non-centroidal rotation, energy and momentum methods, and the principle of impulse and momentum. Now, the, the plane motion of rigid bodies just means um, we're talking about two-dimensional motion which of a, of a non-point body, so it's a rigid body. Um, it can rotate, and so... The, if you take all this, let's see, this is supposed to be um, the sum of all the, fo the forces and the moments. We can write it as the mass times the acceleration and the angular momentum times the angular acceleration. Now for non-centroidal rotations, that's, that's, you know, if it's we can write down the tangential and normal components of the acceleration um, just this way. And we've got the parallel axis theorem here, which just states that the moment of inertia about the non-center of mass point is equal to the moment of inertia about the center of mass plus the mass of the object times the distance between the, the outside point and the center of mass squared. And then here we've got the energy momentum methods, which is really just saying the only thing new we need to know is that the kinetic energy needs to contain a rotational term here uh, um, along with its translational term here and also a way we could write the power using the m the magnitude of the couples and then finally here's the principle of impulse and momentum 